my name is Qua Daniels. Uh, I am a creative. I love music. I love film. In fact, it's the, the pillars of hip hop that I love. So you're talking about visual art, you're talking about knowledge, you're talking about DJ performance, you're talking about break dancing, um, dancing in general. I love spoken word. I love those things. And those are the things that I love to explore through an organisation I founded called Bounce Culture, um, a project that I'm part of called Neo Neo, and just myself as an individual. We're a collective of creatives, um, and our focus is connecting with people through events, through mainstream education, alternative education, and we love the platform of podcasts as well. So Bounce Culture came to be through me DJing in a bar for, what well, was a 10-minute party, um, that then I was asked to come back and start residency. I hadn't DJed before. Um, I'd come from London. I loved music, but I hadn't DJed. So I ended up borrowing equipment, starting the night, calling it Bounce, because I loved the, I loved the energy of the word Bounce. And what I wanted it to incorporate into the night was the feeling of, of people, the positive energy of people coming into the night and leaving the night. And I wanted that to be a positive energy and then for them to keep that atmosphere on the night as well. And I thought bounce was a great word that reflected that. So yeah, it started from that. It was 30 people that went to 150 people a, a, week, uh, a weekend pretty quickly. And then we took over the floor above there. It was a bar Sandino's and Derry. So then we took over the floor above that and it became 250 people at night. And then it just expanded from there, getting local DJs involved because I didn't want people listening to me for four hours every Saturday night. So I've got local DJs involved and then I've got more sort of like regional, like DJs from, because I was based in Derry. So then I was getting DJs from across the North and then that turned into getting DJs from across the island of Ireland. And that turned into getting DJs and bands because I love live music from around the world. So we were getting bands from Australia, we were getting DJs from New York, Sweden, so on and so forth. And at the time that was happening, um, I was also asked to get involved with um, alternative education. Um, I was asked by, I was with the Nerve Centre at the time in Derry, and they asked me about would I break down what I was doing behind the decks and maybe sort of incorporate that into workshops and so on and so forth. So I did that. So that got me more into sort of the alternative education. Whatever we um, incorporated into a night, we thought well, it would be a good course. So for instance, all the skills of event management, um, all the skills of the, you know, DJ techniques, all the skills of making music. We went into video production as well because essentially visuals and all that. So all of those things that we realized we were doing on a weekly basis, we thought, why don't we share those skills in different accredited courses? I suppose they were known as soft skills and it's skills that we had just picked up essentially from just doing it but then realized that those are the same skills the skills that you saw in like in someone creating a night were skills that you would see in more traditional forms of work you know for instance time management um, you know managing yourself uh, communicating with people project management essentially every night that you do is a different project those skills are so transferable so that's why it was important that we sort of highlighted those skills, but essentially presented it in a way that would relate to not just young people, but to anyone that was involved in arts and culture, but might even be in a professional setting and, and vice versa. Anyone that's in arts and culture that wants to be part of a, a more sort of private sector setting or a nine to five setting, don't be afraid to make that leap because you've got skills to do that. So it's about connecting those, those worlds really. There's a mantra that we have called inner rhythm. Um, which is essentially enabling happiness on a daily basis. And that happiness can be through hobbies that you've dropped when you were younger that you want to pick up again, or it could be actually shining a light on hobbies that you don't even know about if you are younger, or an interest and igniting that passion. But we just use the vehicle of music and music technology or event management or podcasting. It's not that we're expecting every participant to then go and, you know, start running nights across the world or start DJing across the world or start making beats, so on and so forth, would be great. But what it is about, it's about maybe going, okay, I found an interest in this, but all the other industries within the music industry, there are so many things that it can lead you on to. It can lead you on to design. It can lead you on to project management. It can lead, you know, there are so many things 
But what we feel is that our programs can maybe ignite that passion in, in, in anyone, you know, or take up that passion again. And hopefully that passion does enable that happiness because we know the, the powers, the endorphins that that sort of thing releases. All those things that can help essentially boost self-confidence is what we're about. And that's where we think it starts with. It's about the individual and self-confidence. If you haven't got that, to affect and impact the world around you and to move in the world around you, it becomes that much more difficult because you're dealing with those issues. But if you're going into a certain setting, confident in who you are, what you're about, confident that if things don't quite go your way, you can express yourself in a certain way to get you out of that mindset, then I think you're good to go in that sense. The term cultural diversity, um, I don't think about this. Here's the thing. When we use the word diversity, it's like diverse from what? You know, we've all got bits of left, right and centre in terms of different cultures. We come from different places. We're all, we're all a, a mishmash, you know? So I think diversity, that, that word diversity for me is slightly problematic because there are just so many, we, we are so many different things and entities and so on and so forth. So what I, what I would say is I think it's really important to highlight, I think it's really important for people just to, be proud of who they are. I think it's important for them to present who they are and what they're about to the world. And however, however that is perceived, so be it, you know? Um, and I know like the traditional, I suppose, de definition of diversity is something, is, is, is people that are essentially not from the area and place that we're talking about. But that, we're so transient now, we all move everywhere, so you can move somewhere, but you've got a whole mishmash of people in that place. You know what I mean? So in that sense, there are more things that are diverse than not. It's a whole just a different landscape now, isn't it, to what it was even, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So yeah, I suppose cultures that are not as represented, is that important? Absolutely, because that, that is a reflection, that's, that's the truth, that's a reflection of, and it's something that I believe that we should be proud of, is, and, and let's not get away from it, from the recent history of Northern Ireland, we're still dealing with that, and then what we have is more people from different backgrounds coming here and, and living here and so on and so forth, so that in itself is, that, you know, there are different conversations going on within that. So with that, with that in mind, being able for, for people from different backgrounds, being able to express themselves here is so, is so important. It is so important. Um, and then you get into the whole thing of what is cultural expression? You know, what is expression? Um, my thing is that I, it would be great just to have a platform that everyone is able to flex in whatever they want to, whatever way they want to do. And there are no judgments in that. And I think maybe being born, um, I think maybe being born in, in London and, and what I grew up, I grew up in a really mixed, you know, it, the group of friends were really, really mixed. And where we went to was like different reflections of that, of that group. So that was like the norm to me is that I wouldn't know where I was going from one week to the next, what club, whether it would be like, you know, Bollywood, whether it'd be like hip hop, whether it'd be like funk, whether it'd be like, punk, whether it be ska, whether it be. So musically, that was my landscape. And I realised how enriched I was from experience, all of that. So it's so important that as a, as a, as a society, society here, that we get to experience all of that. And having those platforms, th those artists and those creatives need those platforms because they're here and they want to they want to flex and they want to represent and they want to express themselves in that way but i think there's quite a restricted view of what is cultural expression here mm -hmm. and until we get through that and until until the, the powers that be enable that to happen through financial support there's no two ways about it it has to be a cross sectorial thing it has to be supported across you know it had this education you know, it's, it, there are so many things that have to happen in order for people to appreciate how important these different modes of expression are. But 
our sector needs help with that. Big time, big time. So then everyone can go and experience all these, all the, the, the richness that is here. My favourite part of working in the arts is the fact that I don't believe you can really have a wrong answer in, in how you express yourself or what you do. And I don't think you even have to substantiate it at times. I think it can just live and be and people can then have the discussion around it. That I absolutely love. The most challenging part in working in the arts, I think, is is having a passion that you think, actually, I could make a living out of this, but not having that support or the environment for it to become your living. So what you're having to do is fill in the financial gaps with things that take you away from that art and creativity, because that art and creativity isn't valued in the same way as a lawyer or as a doctor or, a, you know, but it is. And I think lockdown has absolutely proved that, is that what have people turned to in all this? What are people doing? They're, they're making dance videos, they're making tunes, they're making these you know, collaborations of choirs, they're making, that's what people are doing. They're, turning, they're painting rainbows. They're, so that's the very thing that has got us through probably one of the most challenging periods in the last however many years, 30, 40 years, and that's what they've turned to and yet it's still not valued. So um, that's the most challenging part is is getting, again, the powers that be to realise how valuable this sector is to how everything else, to how we operate as human beings. You know, like how we, fu we, we function so much better if we have a creative outlet. So um, that's the most challenging part for me is getting people to realise how valuable what we do is and how valuable it is to them and when they engage with it, what they get out of it. Girls Allowed was a project that we did, was essentially we realised that it was like less than 1% of our participants were female. So we, we devised a project that worked in uh, five different schools and they all contributed to a documentary. So one school made the music, one school wrote the lyrics through personal development workshops, one school did all the filming, one school did all the event management, so on and so forth, and then one school hosted the introduction and um, the introductory sort of event and the, the uh, end of project event. That was really powerful for me because it was over and it was all accredited. So it was like nearly 200, 200 accreditations were earned through this project and also opened up the creative industries to these, you know, or, or, or supported, like, you know, some of them were very much into it anyway. But this project really maybe flipped on a switch in terms of enjoying being creative, but also there could be a career in this. Girls Allowed is a big one. There's another project I'm involved with called Neo Neo. Um, just the whole Neo Neo vibe I'm proud of. Um, we did a project last year that was essentially, it was, uh, it was funded like women in music. And it ended up being like um, creating beats, mixes, and then that becoming an event at the end of the course. And it was going from um, participants that were, were into it, but had never really performed before, to them absolutely tearing the roof off of uh, it was a green room, black box. Proud of that. Bounce Africa I'm proud of because that's us connecting with, well, it's connecting with my roots personally in terms of going to Sub-Saharan Africa. So we're in Senegal. Um, so we've been there a couple of times now. And then we went to start work in Ghana. So I'm very proud of that because it's very outward looking, you know, in terms of being based here, but looking that far out, I love, I love that. Who inspires me is anyone that pursues their passion against the odds. Anyone that pursues their passion, and if they make a living out of it, even better. In fact, that's, that's the ultimate for me. Whoever is able to do that, and whoever has done that, is an absolute inspiration to me because, and, and I say against the odds in terms of, you know, 
being a creative and an artist has always been, you're always against the odds, um, you know, and in different settings and environments and societies and you're against the odds. So that for me, that's who, you know, that, that's who inspires me, that person, those people. What inspires me is a scene called Broken Beat. All right, very quick one. Broken Beat is, um, it, was, it was a sound that's from West London, but essentially it incorporates different types of music that I grew up listening to. And this scene came about and it was just like all my Christmases at once in terms of this is everything that I love in music in the one form of music. I love elements of hip hop. I'm a soul head, I'm a funk head, I'm a jazz head. I love African rhythms. I love South American, like Latin music. I love techno and, and all these different forms of music came together in this one scene. Even the actual term broken beat, the energy of it I love because it's all about disrupting. It's all about against the grain. It's all about taking like linear beats, but totally messing around with the rhythms. So it feels like something that's quite sort of jarring to a point, but if you really lock into it, and if you have an idea of what all the different influences are, it makes total sense. To be able to understand it, you have to be able to know and experience all these other forms of music. So it forces you to open your head. It forces you to go and investigate. It forces you to go and not stay in your spot. It forces you to go into other spots. It forces you to feel comfortable feeling uncomfortable. That's what inspires me is being, is being pushed into areas that you feel uncomfortable because essentially I think that's where you get your, your most learning and where we are today, society today and what we've all experienced over the last four, six months, the way forward is pushing yourself into those areas because yeah, that, that's where we're going to develop and learn. For the arts, A Brighter Future is cross cross-sectoral support, there's no two ways about it. It needs help from every sector of, of our society, it needs help. Um, so that's from government departments, it's private sector, it's public sector. The creative sector as a whole, in terms of how that can help is, we have to keep on being really honest. We have to keep on embracing weird we have to keep on doing that. See this, you know, see churning out the same old stuff, the same old formulas, so on and so forth. That doesn't really interest me because it doesn't advance anything. It advances nothing. I'm not saying it doesn't have a place, but I think it has too much of a place. I think having that comfortable, oh, I know that tune, or I know that play, or I know that book, or I know, how is that advancing anyone's thinking? And again, if you can move that mindset to maybe feeling slightly uncomfortable and being challenged, and I think for that to happen, we as artists and creatives have to keep on leading the way in that. And, and, and again, and, and, and society as a, as a whole has to get comfortable with embracing things that they don't see as normal, hence weird. <laughs> for me, embrace the weird, challenge, that's going to move all this forward, definitely. That's what, that's what society can do, but that's what we can do as well, is keep on pushing that narrative of this will never stay still. There will always be something around the corner that is going to, is going to switch it up again. So we need to keep doing that. We have to keep doing that. And then as a society, like, if that can be supported financially so that it can be, we can earn a living out of it, then for me, that's what's gonna move all this forward. Hello, thank you so much for watching and for tuning in. My name is Rebecca Fitch. I'm gonna play a quick song for you. Um, the song I'm gonna play is one of my own ones, it's called Poison. And the story behind the song is basically a call to action to be able to distinguish um, the information that we, we take in every day, whether it's stuff we read, whether it's stuff we see, we watch, we see in social media, um, being able to work out the stuff that is true and the stuff that we should believe and the stuff that isn't true. And just the, the awareness that that, that, that brings, um, it's such a powerful thing whenever you're able to believe things that are really true and, um, and wipe away all the things that 
it's false information and things that are lies about yourself and about other people. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed the song. Thanks for listening. Ooh. Mm-hmm.
<laughs> Big hugs from my children. Jumping into the sea when it's absolutely freezing makes me feel resilient. I am in control of my happiness. Um, getting perspective. Whether I find it on my own or I go to others for theirs. Even though sometimes I'm not quite ready to hear it at that very time. A great script and a cup of tea. <sighs> Hi, I'm Elena Smith and what makes me resilient is wanting to take up space in a world that tells me and so many others to shrink. What makes me feel resilient? I think majorly self-belief. Um, being able to like, keep my focus in the right the right place and on the on the things that serve me as opposed to the things that don't maybe people's opinions on what I'm doing or what they're doing and um, I also think just the continuous desire to create and want to make stuff and I don't think I've ever been able to lose that so I don't really have any other choice than to be resilient especially in this game I would say that Resilience to me is the ability to find strength when you're vulnerable. And despite being vulnerable in certain situations, um, it's about picking yourself up, dusting yourself off, and just looking forward to the next challenge and facing it head on. I think that for all of us who work in the arts, we go through so many ups and downs. But for me, the idea of resilience is very closely linked to a complete and utter love for what you do and without that love there would be absolutely <laughs> no resilience. Mm, what makes me resilient? My practice, other artists, the vault and my husband who's awesome. What makes me feel resilient is when I remind myself how much I've achieved and how much I've overcome as a person. Um, as a woman working in my industry and that I'm able to ignore all the voices in my head that might tell me I'm not good enough or I'm not smart enough or I'm not rich enough or I'm not talented enough and I keep going and I pursue what I want to pursue. Fellow artists and all of their support and understanding. Hello, Liz Weir, storyteller here. This is a time when my resilience has really been tested. All I'd say is that probably listening to other people's stories and hearing how they're getting by actually helps my own resilience plus going out and walking in the forest and just clearing my head and counting my blessings that's about it i feel resilient when i'm able to share challenges and feel supported when i'm vulnerable enough to talk about what i'm facing and feel heard so i keep going because of my family my friends um the music uh, that we as Sharon make, um, even though there's times that it just feels impossible for things to get better, it does, and it's just trying to hold on. Fighting the good fight. Fighting for other people's rights. That's what keeps me going. It makes me stubborn because there's work to be done. It's not easy though. What makes me feel resilient? I think my dad makes me feel resilient. He reminds me why I'm doing what I'm doing if I ever have a wobble um, and reminds me how far I've come as well. I think sometimes the people who you're closest to maybe creatively as well can can be a source of resilience because they value you sometimes more than you value yourself what helps me to feel resilient is managing my expectations 
So I think what makes me feel resilient is knowing that where I am today, I've survived everything the world has thrown at me so far and I've got through that. So it kind of makes you feel like you can uh, push on forward and know that you're capable of dealing with whatever comes your way. Perseverance, productivity, and dancing. The one thing that makes me feel resilient and hopeful more than anything else is knowing that this is temporary, as all things are. I'm stumped. Hi, my name's Kira King and the thing that keeps me most resilient, I think, is the big sense of community that I have with a lot of people um, in the music scene. I feel like even when I think that I can't succeed, um, the amount of people who have my back and help me bounce back up again and um, fill me with like positivity and everything um, is just amazing. I think that keeps me resilient because like other people have on your back even when you don't have your own, it's just so, it's so wonderful and cute. I feel most resilient as an artist when I'm collaborating with people in different time zones and different geographies. I like to feel rooted in the wider world. Um, it also helps when I've had a nap. <laughs> On a really basic level, exercise and keeping my body strong, my mind calm and present, but realistically, and practically pouring all of my energy into what feels right and using my energy and my instinct and the desire to be and do so so much more. Um, what makes me feel resilient is I think the fact that um, I've been a musician for 15 years and I've had many a kind of knockback and a lack of self-confidence and 15 years later I'm still I'm still here and I'm self-employed and I'm still releasing music and you know paying the mortgage and I think that yeah it's sim simple as that really is kind of you just have to keep keep at it alcohol <laughs> just joking family friends hope and yoga creativity helps me feel resilient it's how I make sense of the world it's how I interact with people around me it's what makes me happy. Um, what makes me resilient as an artist? Probably just having an understanding of the industry and knowing that, you know, like not every door is going to open in your favour. And that's okay, you know. It could be to do with the music, but it could be to do with how you look, who your dad is, like absolutely anything else. So. You know, don't be too disheartened if you don't get packed for this thing because if you work hard enough and you're good enough, opportunities are going to come up and you just need to have the drive to support your craft. So I think resilience is just never giving up, no matter who rates you or who doesn't. I think a source of resilience at the minute has come out of this pandemic. I think we all whenever lockdown hit, individually we were all in a state of grief. And then you look around and realise everybody's in the same boat. And I think we forgot that for a while, that we were all in this together before the pandemic. And we will all be in this together after, you know, when we come through to the other side, whenever that is. Um, this has been a, a fortifying experience almost. We've all stood together. The arts community of Northern Ireland has stood together in a way that it has potentially never done before. And I get a sense of resilience and strength from that, that we can stand together and support one another through this. And if we can support one another through this, we can support one another through anything.
so long, not far till we reach the top. But this is the hardest part of all. Our bodies burnt out from this ride, jaded and worn from staying quiet. So much to say for far too long. Then we let it out. Mm -hmm. We just let it out.